Welcome folks. Today I was going to be talking a little bit about a electric fuel pump. Uh, the ones that uh, are located inside the fuel tank and they are the ones that uh, pressurize the system for fuel injection. Um, this one here is out of a mid-90s uh, General Motors minivan. Um, what I've done today, this one is uh, doesn't work anymore so I decided I'd cut it apart and so you and I could both have a look and see what was uh, inside this thing. Uh, what I've done earlier was uh, got out my trusty hacksaw, cut all the way around here, and then I found that it was pressed. The innards were pressed inside this uh, aluminum canister, so I had to run the after I got that part cut. Then I had to run the hacksaw along here and cut a linear slot here in order to relieve the pressure so that I wouldn't have to use a punch or a hammer to get the innards out and destroy everything. Uh, notice an elastic band there, that's just to keep this uh, end cap here from springing out. There's some brushes in there. Uh, I'll explain that as we go along. Uh, okay, now when they're in the, um, like I say, they're right inside the fuel tank. They sit right in the gasoline. And believe it or not, when this thing is pumping fuel at about 50 psi or better, um, fuel actually runs right through an electric motor and then out through the top outlet. Um, what I have here is a filter sock and there's the inlet there for the, um, the fuel when it's sitting in the fuel tank. The orientation of this one is installed in the tank is, is like so. Um, here's the bottom of the tank along here and this filter sock is made out of a nylon type of material. It's, uh, it's a really fine mesh uh, it's it's not as uh, it's not as fine uh, as a filtration unit as an inline uh, fuel filter is, but this filters out most of the stuff that's uh, you know too coarse to go through the pump. It would just destroy it if it did. So it's like a a pre-filter if you. It's an in the tank uh, one to get rid of most of the crud, keep it from going through your uh, fuel pump. Also, there's this. Um, This uh, rubber, sort of a foam rubber type sleeve, it was uh, it was over top of this, and I'm, I'm assuming that's that's the way it looks. I'm assuming that it uh, it cushions it and uh, maybe cuts down on the vibration a little bit. Uh, probably cut down the noise somewhat too. Um, I'll just get that out of the way, just for, just so we can see what's going on here. Um, okay, we'll start to explain how this thing works. Like I say, this is the fuel inlet here goes through the filter sock that I just showed you. Uh, it gets drawn in here and then there's two pumps. I'll be get, getting this apart in a, in a few moments here. There's two pumps. A low pressure or transfer pump pumps into another one that sits here and it's uh, a hardened steel pump. That's the high pressure pump. From there it goes through uh, an electric motor and then it comes out here. This is, uh, this is the outlet tube here where the uh, fuel line would attach to in order to take it to the um, out of the tank. It, it takes it. Uh, the steel line would come there, and then it would reconnect as a, a fitting on the um, the part with the uh, the sender, the fuel gauge sender. So it's it's all uh, incorporated in one unit. You slide it into the tank along with the float arm for the um, the fuel gauge sender. Okay, let's start taking this thing apart and see what we have here. Get the elastic band off. You'll notice the end will probably spring off. Well, that's what the elastic band was for. There's the uh, the end cap. There's one of the brushes. The other brush kind of fell out out of convenience. I can show you that in its entirety. And we'll get on to those uh, check valves that are in there. The whole unit just kind of slides out like so. And we'll start with this. It's just an aluminum canister. Not much more uh, and a glorified uh, pop can, if you will, aluminum pop can, only it's made specifically for this part here. So that's the housing, the outer housing. Um, on the top of it, it was actually, looks like it was rolled around and then you can see this hourglass shape here. It was actually rolled into this plastic uh, end bell, if you will, and that uh, completes the unit. Um, start at the fuel inlet end. There's a, uh, a low pressure pump, it's all plastic, and it acts as a transfer pump. The, um, the fuel enters here, 
there's an impeller there's an impeller inside here uh, the fuel is drawn from here the end of the motor shaft it spins in this uh, rectangular hole here and drives the um, the impeller in order to feed fuel up into the uh, start of the uh, the high pressure pump which is made out of hardened steel so there's the transfer low pressure transfer pump that gets things started gets the fuel flowing into the end of the pump itself now there's uh, two really strong magnets in here um, it's a DC motor uh, there's a copper uh, commutator here with uh, several segments in it and that's where the uh, the brushes uh, supply the electricity into the armature of the uh, the motor itself um, let's see if we can get this apart and see what how stubborn it's going to be it's a strong magnet in there you really got to watch your fingers getting this one out oh strong okay okay there's the motor shaft it's uh it's got a double drive system on it. Before I get into the high pressure pump, I'll explain it to you. I was saying about the um, the low pressure pumps impeller. It was uh, had a rectangular hole on the end of um, on the end of this armature here. There's two two flats on the uh, the armature shaft itself. It just basically fits into the impeller, and then that spin, spins inside the housing in order to get the fuel up to the high pressure pump. And with the high pressure pump, there's uh, two drive dogs here on what I'll call this. Uh, it's like a plastic flinger. It, it, it directs the fuel on the outside of the armature, and I'll show you where the magnets are. And there's some channels in there that take the uh, fuel through the uh, the motor, and it's uh, on its way. The fuel on its way to the outlet port at the top of the pump. Here's the tricky part now: the high pressure pump. Hopefully I can get this apart without uh, dropping all those little rollers. There we go. All right then. Um, what we have here. This is a high pressure pump. It's made of three three hardened steel segments, two end plates with ports on it. Uh, the other side has similar. I don't want to turn it over. I'll lose all these little sleeves that are in here. Uh, on one side, the uh, fuel comes through these ports, and it gets. Uh, pressurized by this uh, the spinning uh, wheel here with these five uh, little rollers in it compresses the fuel and then sends it out the other side and up through the uh, the motor onto the outlet port of the pump and let's see if we can do this now um, that's the centered part there I'm going to try to spin this this is actually probably running in I don't know I'm guessing uh, maybe in excess of 10,000 rpm a centrifugal force will force these uh, these little rollers. Yeah, where's my? I have to use something else, I guess. Um, there's these little rollers here, and um, with this spinning so fast in the thousands of RPM, these would stay to the outside of the housing. This housing isn't round in here. The intermediate housing, where this uh, all the stuff's flying around, it's sort of a oh a triangular kind of a, it's an irregular triangular egg shape kind of a thing that's where it actually centers there so these rollers at this part of this uh, the shape of this thing they're up tight here and as they spin the centrifugal force will send these rollers to the outside of this uh, cam shaped housing here so this is might not be the right direction but it's it's a way I can do it show you and explain you can see these rollers they're actually coming out of these u-shaped slots in the uh, called an impeller if you will but there, centrifugal force would force those rollers. I'm trying to use gravity here, but I can't tilt too much. You won't see it. But if you can see them sort of slide into the outside of the housing as I turn it, that's what, what creates the pressure. It grabs some fuel and then pressurizes it and send it, sends it through the, uh, the rest of the uh, motor housing and up, up and through. Well, there's the high pressure pump. I bet you that thing can do 100 pounds per square inch, uh, no problem. But there are regula uh, regulating um, check valves in here. I'll show you in a few minutes. So there's the uh, the motor, the armature, and here's the housing for the armature. Here um, has two really strong magnets in it. They're a, a C shape. Starts there, ends there. This one starts here and ends here. And in here, there's two channels. They're um, actually two hardened steel, uh, like spring steel. 
and they force the magnets uh, into the housing here so that uh, they're stuck in there and they don't move anywhere. They're fixed in there by the pressure of these two spring clips. It also looks like they, they form a channel for the fuel to come through. Now I'll put this uh, armature back in, but you really got to be careful with this thing because uh, it really wants to take off. Uh, got to orient it the right way. Let's see. It down. This thing will really go. You got to really be careful. Those magnets are very, very strong. You can watch this thing take off. It just wants to grab and go. So, anyways, there's what I was telling you about. Here's these two channels. Hopefully, you can see them with the lighting that I have. I'll go left and right. That way, you'll know where I'm, I'm heading. That's the one on the right and the one on the left. They create the channels, and this is the bottom side. This would be with the pump, the downside of the pump. With this motor spinning fast, and this, uh, the shape of this thing, it looks like a slinger where it would try to make the, as it's spinning, it would try to force the fuel to the outside, and then it would go up these channels. Now I'll flip it over. The fuel would come mostly through these two channels where those uh, retaining clips are for the magnets, but as well there's, there must be a little bit of fuel getting right inside between the armature and the magnets themselves. Like I, I begin to wonder when you got something with electricity running it right inside gasoline. I, I don't know. You just doesn't seem like it should be happening without making some kind of a an explosion, if you want to call it that. But there's uh, there's the uh, one of the spring-loaded brushes that's still in there. That's what it it looks like, and I can show you what they uh, they actually look like. Right, we got magnetism going on here now. All right, here's the um, here's the brush. It's one of the. This is what it looks like installed. It's uh, that one's about three eighths of an inch long or better. And uh, that's what creates the pressure when it goes up against the uh, copper commutator on the uh, armature of the motor. That's what supplies the uh, the voltage to the motor itself. Uh, there's one that actually fell out. Lucky for us, now we can see what it actually looks like. It's just. Uh, just a carbon brush, typical of most uh, small motors. A uh, much larger shape if it was a starter motor for a car, say, and then there's a braided copper uh, uh, wire there that connects up up into, and they, they finally end up, they go through the inside and they end up with these two terminals. There's the plug for the power supply. There'll be a cabling that goes inside the fuel tank that supplies the power to these two pins in order to uh, power up the motor. Uh, there's the spring that creates the uh, the pressure for those to those brushes to rub against the commutator, and onto the check check balls check valves if you will. Uh, this is where the fuel comes out. This is the top of the pump. It flows this direction here. There's a, a check valve in here. It's a steel ball bearing, and it's got a very light spring on on the other side of it. You can just wouldn't have to do much more than breathe on that to make it uh, actuate. Uh, the fuel can flow no problem, but the thing is when the, you shut your engine off, you cut the power to the electric fuel pump here. The fuel, let's say it's uh, 50 pounds per square inch of uh, fuel pressure in the fuel line, that would naturally uh, cause this check ball to uh, seat itself in this valve here, and it would maintain pressure while the, um, the vehicle wasn't operating for a quite a lengthy time. Uh, can't say for sure. If you didn't have a leak, I imagine you might even get a day or two out of it before it bled down. And on the other side here is a much a similar thing, only it's got a much stronger spring underneath it. Um, it's probably a pressure relief. It looks like a plastic ball instead of a steel one. You really got to push hard to get that one to go down. And what that would be is probably pressure relief. Um, if you start getting up a little closer to 100 psi, I would assume that that would compress that spring. There's a port here, and uh, if pressure builds too high, you would just uh, take the excess uh, pressured fuel and out this port and into the rest of the gas tank. This is probably, you know, if you got a half a tank of gas or better, this whole pump is probably submerged. So, just trying to think. Uh, I think that's pretty much got it. To sum it up, uh, you've got the filter sock, it takes the, most of the crud. There's a lot of stuff in gas tanks, especially steel gas tanks over a number of years. You get scale, rust, contaminants, whatnot. Um, 
that that filters most of that out. Most cars doesn't matter if it's fuel ejected or not. They have a sock of some kind in there, uh, or some kind of a pre-filter, so it doesn't uh, come through the fuel system. Then on to the uh, the low pressure transfer pump. It goes in through the bottom. Motor spinning the impeller for the low pressure, and then this is coupled right up tight against the uh, the high pressure pump. So basically, this transfers fuel at a lower pressure and then this increases the pressure to the fuel line uh, pressure that's needed to run the inject injectors. And I already explained the electrical and the check valves. So that's pretty much got it for that. Gives you and I both a, a good idea what's going on inside that gas tank if you've got fuel injection. There's a little electric motor in there pumping, uh, pumping away to keep things running for you. Well, I enjoyed making this. I hope you enjoy watching it. Well, take care, and bye for now.